Michigan at the Alamo Dome. We are joined by Tennessee head coach Kelly Harper, who recorded her first career win as Lady Ball head coach in the NCAA tournament and is now three and one in her last two seasons playing in the tournament. With that, we'll turn it over to Coach to open state with an opening statement and then we'll take your questions. Coach. Yeah, we're excited to be advancing and, um, you know, really proud of our team for getting um, the first round win, uh, taking care of business there. We, uh, we know we have a really tough opponent in Michigan. Uh, they've got a uh, great post, great guard, uh, the right pieces. They're obviously coming from a very physical league, have good size. So it's, uh, it, it's going to be a tough one, but we're excited about it and we're, we're ready to, to get out on the court and play. And we'll take questions and we'll begin with Maria. Coach, as long as Tennessee has been playing basketball, it's rare for you to have an opponent you have never played before. And that will be the case tomorrow, of course, with Michigan. Just what challenges do they present, particularly Naz Hillman, of course, and they seem to be almost, in some cases, a mirror image of your team. They have size over six foot at every starting position, physical team out rebounds their opponents. Just what are you seeing on film with them? Well, I think it's a, a really interesting matchup because I agree with you. I think, um, you know, this is, this is one of those people probably look at on paper and say, let's make sure we tune into this one um, because uh, we do, both teams do match up well with each other. Um, I think the, they're, they're, the problems that they present their opponents, one, Nas Hillman is really, really good. She's not the player of the year for, <laughs> for no reason. I mean, she is, she is incredible in how she works to get the ball in scoring position. She's incredible when she gets the ball to be able to score, and she's incredible getting on the board. So I think um, she is going to be a handful for our post players. And then obviously coming off um, a good season and a great game is Leah Brown, you know, athletic wing that can put the ball on the floor. She can shoot. She's aggressive. Play, feels really good about her game right now. So obviously those are their – that's their one-two punch. And then I think there are other pieces. They have size. They have athleticism. They can shoot. They get the ball on the floor. Um, they're, they're really excited to be here right now and, and taking advantage of this opportunity. So I think it's uh, – I think their team is, um, I think they're a really good team and I think they're, uh, they're going to be tough. Go to Jordan Kramer. Hey Kelly, Maria kind of mentioned this, but Michigan, like you, likes to crash the boards and they out, out rebounds their opponent in almost every game they played this season. How just physical do you feel like that battle is going to be on the boards and how key will it be for, for Tamari and for Cassiana to, I think as they've put it before, kind of unleash beast mode in tomorrow's game? Well, I think it would be really great for us to establish some post presence offensively and obviously on the glass. And uh, we have been consistent and we've, I think we've out rebounded everybody but one this year and that was in the semis against South Carolina. Uh, we have to do that, but they're, they're going to make that difficult for us because they're, they're going to be very physical and they're going to have, obviously, as we talked about, great size. You're not just going to get rebounds by out jumping people and you're not going to get rebounds because you're bigger. Uh, you're going to have to really stick your nose in there. You're going to be disciplined with your box outs. They're, they're worried about the same thing. They're, doing, they're talking about the same thing and how they're going to keep us off the boards as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's – at this point, it's not about a want to. It, we both want to. Everybody's going to want to. It's about execution. Take our next question from Pat Eaton Robb of the Associated Press. Hi, Coach. Uh, obviously, it was mentioned you got your first win for Tennessee in the NCAA tournament. And also yesterday, Kyra uh, got her first win in the NCAA tournament at Kentucky. How much have you been following her? And can you talk a little bit about your relationship and, and what it means uh, for Pat Summit and, and whether you see Pat's coaching style in Kyra? Um, so, yes, I've been following. I didn't get to watch their game, but I've been following, all, honestly, all the SEC teams in particular. Uh, but, you know, just have a, a special love for Kyra because she was um, my teammate for three years. Uh, absolutely great teammate, loved, loved playing with her. 
loved rooming with her. She was, she was one of my favorite roommates when we always had this rotation and, um, she's such a good person. And I know she's, um, uh, she tough player, um, did a lot of little things that you had to do, played hard. Um, and I think she's asking her team to do the same thing. I think she's, you know, she's coaching them with discipline and obviously everybody knows that's what Pat did. And, um, you know, I, that would be one I would love to step in and watch a practice. I would love to step in and watch Kyra lead a practice uh, because I'm sure I could see some similarities. Madison Blevins. Coach, with the talk of Hillman and Brown, specifically with your team guarding them and the paint, how important is that post-defense, making sure Tamari Key and Cassie kush don't get in foul trouble? Well, I think our post defense is going to be critical to this game. I think, um, like I said earlier, we get our hands full. Uh, you know, we'll have to see if we can go one on one. We may have to find ways to double team. We may have to find ways to to help them out. But uh, you know, obviously, we don't um, we don't have we don't play a lot of people in that position. So, keeping those two on the court, at least one of them on the court at all times, is going to be important to do that. They're going to have to play pretty clean. Take your next question from Will. Yeah, not to kind of keep harping on the same subject, but how do you think the experiences in the SEC playing players like Aaliyah Boston and, and Ryan Howard, who kind of gets in the paint herself, just playing people like that have helped prepare you guys for this game? Yeah, I think one thing that we like to do when, when you get to this point, you try to compare certain players to, to um, people that we've seen and give them something to fall back on. And obviously in the SEC, when you have talented post players like Aaliyah Boston and several others, you know, you, you look back to that and, and where you were successful and maybe where you weren't. Um, you know, we'll, we'll try to, um, as, as I think all teams do at this point, you try to draw from your experiences. And, um, you know, when we're putting a game plan together, we, we we talk about what we've done before and maybe what we haven't done that we just don't know if we can take that step. So I think as a, as a coaching staff, really utilizing those experiences to give our, give our team a really good game plan. And if that's a plan A, plan B, plan C, make sure we've got everything covered. Um, I think the SEC provides us a, a physical game We've had to guard great guards. We've had to guard great post players. We've had to guard great rebounders. So I think you just try to go go back to what made you successful in those moments. Next, we'll go to Luis Fernandez. Hey, Kelly, more of a philosophical question. When you face a player who can score as well as Nas can, I mean, 50 points at one point this season, what – to adjust your defense accordingly. Uh, you know, how, do you focus on containing more than stopping? What, what do you? What's your experience been? Well, honestly, it depends. Um, you know, sometimes we talk about um, trying to. Typically, great players are not going to shut down. We're, we're not going to keep her scoreless. That's just not going to happen. Um, sometimes you're trying to slow them down. Sometimes you're going to try to, uh, you know, cover everybody else. And, and make her beat you. Uh, there's so many different philosophical ways to look at each game. Uh, I, I can't say that I have one particular way going into every game. It's, it is different. It's different and, and it's different based on how we're playing at the time, how the opponent's playing at the time, what the matchups are, are they favorable in other places? Uh, I think, you know, as a team, we have to, we have to weigh those uh, if you've got to give up something, you've got to give up something probably pretty good at this point. I mean, this is a good basketball team. And um, so you, you're just uh, – sometimes you're playing the numbers. Sometimes you're playing the field and, and how, the, how the flow is going of the game. Right, we'll go back to Maria. Coach, no bus ride to Austin tomorrow. You get to play at the Alamo Dome. Will you get a chance to be on the court before you play or with all the games? Is that kind of hard still? Couldn't get in there today. We were in the convention center at, at our practice today, but we do have a scheduled shoot around in the morning. So we will be able to get in there and, you know, see the venue, get some shots up. So, you know, for me, I want to check out that depth perception, see what that feels like. And 
uh, you know, at least at least they're not walking in there at game time and, you know, that being the first time they see it. So I'm, I'm really excited that we have that opportunity in the morning. Madison Blevins. Coach, you talked about it some in the beginning, but it really is crazy when you look at your team side by side on paper, you're almost matched in every category, points per game, rebounds, three point percentage, uh, even assists and turnovers are pretty parallel with Michigan and Tennessee. So if you can pinpoint just like one thing where you're like, if we can win this area on the court, we're going to win, what would that be? <laughs> uh... I don't know that I can give you just one. I think that's I think that's tough. It'd be um, like to take care of the basketball. Would like to um, try to take away some easy paint points for them. Would like to win the board, the battle on the boards. I'd like to shoot about seventy five percent tomorrow. That'd be great. <laughs> um, you know, I think. Um, you know, when you're playing somebody even, and I don't know that there is one stat that can win this game. I think you're going to have to execute on both ends of the court. I really do. All right, we'll go back to Pat Ethan Rob of AP. Coach, there was a story today in the Wall Street Journal that said that um, the term March Madness has been reserved by the NCAA for the men's tournament only. And I wanted to get your reaction to that and why that is. And, you know, you look at the logo on the women's court and it just says women's college basketball. And um, just wanted to get your reaction. Well, that's, I, I didn't know that. I've, I've been really focused in on our team today and, and practicing, uh, getting ready for Michigan. Uh, I, I don't know, I use it. I use that term. I don't know if I'm using it illegally. I mean, this is March Madness and to me that we're part of that. I, I don't, that's a, I have to go and read that, but um, I guess they'll get me for something I did wrong, but we're in, Mar in the middle of March Madness and to watch the games being played today and, and in the next couple of weeks, if you, you have to use that term with what we're doing right now. It just, just makes sense. So I don't know, that's interesting. Maria Cornelius. Coach, I want to circle back to it being a first time opponent and just how unusual that is to flip through the media guide and not see any previous game against Michigan. And also your two kids, Jackson and Kylie, I think they won the internet last night dancing for mama. Just um, how nice was it to get to see them and how much do you miss your kids when you guys are in this bubble? Uh, well, uh, for historians, especially Lady Ball historians like you, Maria, I'm sure that when you flip through there, you you would have already remembered um, if we had played, if Tennessee had played Michigan in the past, you probably could have spit out all the stats from that game if we had played Michigan in the past. So it actually is very unusual, the you know Tennessee and how how uh, how many games nationwide tournament games and other that have been played and not to have a a team like Michigan on there is, is a little bit unusual. Um, yeah, you know, I think one thing I'm so excited to be here and, you know, we understand the bubble and understand, you know, we're here, we're in it. We hope to be in it a long time, but uh, as a mom, it's hard. It's hard. Thank goodness for FaceTime because we can see the kids and they can send videos and we talk to, I talk to them multiple times per day, but, um, you know, it's hard. They, you know, when you, when your two-year-old looks at you and says, you, you're going to get me in the morning, and you, you have to say no. And uh, Jackson at least understands it a little bit more, but um, we're very fortunate that we have um, a, a nanny back home taking great care of them, but uh, I, I'm, I'm already, I'm ready to squeeze them. I don't want to go home to squeeze them yet, but I'm ready to squeeze them when I, when I get to see them. All right, that'll conclude Coach's portion. Thank you, Coach, for joining us, and we'll have Jordan Walker shortly. All right, thank you, guys.